assalamu alaikum my dear students how are you hope you will be fine and okay i welcome you all into my today lecture uh, it's unit 16 today's lecture is 37 uh, the unit is physics of solids and i am your teacher muhammad ikram so let us start with the name of allah almighty Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today topic is uh, an, an extremely important topic and it includes the energy band theory, the valence band, the conduction band. And here it is the valence band, the conduction band. Like this one. The valence band and the conduction band okay thank you now first of all uh, and then insulator conductors and semiconductors see here and the same is the problem here also uh, look we have the okay the insulators conductors and semiconductors we will explain all these on the basis of the energy band theory now let us start with the energy band theory that what is the energy band theory uh, before starting the energy band theory i would like to introduce to you the free electron theory the free electron theory you know that uh, as i told you uh, when i was explaining to you about the uh, currents in a conductor then there i told you that the current in a conductor is due to the flow of free electrons then uh, in that situation, when we were explaining the Ohm law, then even within that, you came across with the terms the Ohmic conductor, the Ohmic conductors, and the non Ohmic conductors, the non Ohmic conductors. there we explain that for the ohmic conductors that ohmic conductors are those conductors which obey ohm's law that is there is a linear relationship between i and v and then i give you examples also for the non-ohmic conductor the iv relationship was a non-linear relationship right and there were some strange situations where even for example look the tungsten which is a conductor and that is the filament of the bulb but they does not obey a non-linear relationship why because that if you remember we were having this kind of graph that voltage that is if we increase the voltage and the current then till some point they were indirectly proportional to each other but after some time when the filament of the bulb was heated then for the same value of v the current begins to decrease this was something very unacceptable for the free electron theory which could not explain this nature of the non-ohmic conductor similarly for this was the this one and those conductors for example the semiconductor substances even for the semiconductor substances you have noticed that while increasing the temperature while increasing the uh, while increasing the temperature of some substances the uh, resistance of those substances were drastically decreased and the conductor the substance were moved more towards the conductivity right so um, that was another set of material so the free electron theory in which we have studied that 
that inside the conductor it is the free electrons which are the current carrier so that theory was unable to completely explain the nature of some substances for example the ohmic and the non ohmic substances and the semiconductor substances as well and then for uh, that is their response to the external electric field so the new theory uh, the free electron theory was replaced by a new theory known as the energy band theory which is based on the wave model of uh, the quantum mechanical model of the substance in this theory is more successful than the free electron theory in explaining the electrical nature of the substance now let us start how uh, this depends let me choose you see that in each and every shell and subs there is the each atom contains shell and subshell as you see and we call these shells and subshells of the atom as the energy level so they contains discrete amount of energy as you see here look at this uh, diagram here in this diagram you see we have the uh, atoms here we have the nucleus as you see the nucleus and then there are shells the k shell the l shell the m shell and the l shell and these shells are in fact the energy levels right and these energy level we call the first energy level the second energy level and the third energy level and the fourth energy level as you see this is for the single isolated atom of a substance single isolated isolated atom of a substance an atom has different energy the atom has a different energy levels right atom has a different energy level as you see look the the energy level one the energy level two this is for example called the lowest energy level this is called the highest energy level so an atom has a different energy level now this is i did for an an individual atoms for in a single atom as you see look right and because the energy is associated due to the kinetic and potential energy of the electron in that very particular orbit right and as a whole we call that orbit is the energy level right now when atoms are brought close closer to each other electrons at the outermost shell interact with each other all the electron now look that is that the isolated atoms are then brought close together to form what to form a solid right and so when the atoms are brought close to each other electrons at the outer motion interact with each other this interaction causes the change in energy level of the electrons at the outermost shell so this changes the energy level of the electron as you see here and we get this discrete energy levels now when all the energy levels combine then we have the ranges of the energy level as you see look in this diagram we have this energy level this energy level and this energy level it is after when all the energy level of the isolated atoms when they combine so it will be represented by this diagram this change will give rise to energy band theory right this theory and then i will explain it to you each substance consists of different amount of electrons energy present in the energy bands right depends on the number of electrons in that orbit or shell based on these different energy levels the 
energy bands are then further classified as follow we have the valence band as you see here and now i will explain to you that what are what is the valence band so here we have the valence band and we have the forbidden energy gap as you see we have the forbidden energy gap here for the insulator the forbidden energy gap here for the semiconductors and we have a very negligible or uh, uh, no energy uh, gap for the conductors between their valence band and the conduction band now let us start with the valence band that what is the valence band the valence band is usually filled with electrons must be filled must be filled the outermost shell of the electron it is what the outermost shell of the electron uh, sorry the, the outermost shell of the um, Atom. So it must be filled, must be filled with electrons, with electrons, and can never be empty, and can never be empty. So you must remember this point particularly for your MCQs that this valence band can never be empty. So here you see the valence band must have some electrons. Now look, as this is the valence shell, as you see, so it must be filled, it can never be empty, right? There must be some electron in the valence band. This band is of, we sometimes call this band of maximum energy band of maximum maximum energy this is the band of what this is the band of maximum energy in this band the electrons have they uh, uh, they have the maximum energy so here for the valence band the valence band have the the maximum energy band right now there is one important point as we are studying for example currents through various substances so please keep in mind that that is that due to the electrons in the valence band there is no flow of current there is no flow of current no flow of current due to electrons due to electrons due to electrons in this band in this band in this band due to due to the external electric field due to the external electric field due to the external electric field since moon charges always constitute electric current there must be as you see here in this diagram there must be orbital current right as you see as the electron move there must be a current due to the motion of the electron in that orbit but it is not due to the external electric field the ex external electric field does not influence the motion of this electron and it never be the cause of the current so the electron in the valence band give rise to no current due to the external electric field so even when the external electric field is applied this does not cause any current and the simple example is for example when you connect a material like plastic or bed conductor of electricity so even that it does not sense that they, there are only uh, electrons in the valence band therefore that external electric current does not uh, causes the electrons to move in one direction
right and no electric current is generated so there is no current this as i told that this cannot be empty right so that is all about the valence band so the valence band can be can be felt or it can be what it can be filled with electrons but can never be yeah can never be empty it can never be empty so mm, this is all about the valence band and then for example i would like to tell you that the uh, that is whether if it is insulators semiconductors or conductors the valence band may have some electron in them and they are always filled right they can never be empty the next important point is the conduction band now what is the conduction band we call this is sometime the higher energy level band higher the higher energy level the higher energy level band this is called the higher energy level band right as you see here we have the conduction band in the insulator the conduction band in the semiconductor as you see here and the conduction band in the conductors also now remember the conduction band it can be partially filled can be what can be partially filled it can be partially filled or can be empty it can be empty also right and it can be partially filled also for example in case of the insulator the conduction band is completely empty right while in the case of the con conduction the case of semiconductors and conductors it is partially filled right so that is for the uh, conduction band the electrons in the conduction bands here are called free electrons free electrons so the conduction band contains free electrons the electrons here are free so the conduct uh, that is the conduction band contains free electron which is in fact what which is uh, which are the source of which are the source of electric current electric current under the influence of external electric field external electric field under the influence of what external electric field when when external electric field is applied so when you apply the external electric field then this becomes the cause of these free electron will allow the flow of current so what does this means the result is that the electrons here the electrons here can gain the electrons here can gain energy can gain energy from external electric field from external electric field right contrary to this here electrons cannot gain energy from the external electric field electrons cannot gain energy from the external electric field from the external electric field right so long story short 
we can say that current is due to the electrons in this band current is due to the electrons in this band the electrons in this band in this band clear now there is the forbidden energy gap the forbidden energy gap lie between between the conduction band between the conduction band and the valence band as you see so look we have here the forbidden energy gap this is forbidden energy gap this is forbidden energy gap here it is in, uh, in the conductors it is negligibly are very very small so small that the conduction band and the valence band are overlapping right so the conduction the the uh, energy gap is in between the conduction band and the valence band the energy gap it is completely empty completely empty no free it contains no free electrons right so there is it is completely empty and as you see it is of uh, variable size so the width of the conduction band this as you see here this is called the wet this is called the wet the wet of the uh, energy band uh, the energy uh, the forbidden energy gap now this in a forbidden energy gap the wet depends on the nature of the substance the wet of the energy gap yeah band gap our energy gap depends purely on the nature of that substance the nature of that substance it completely depends on the nature of that substance moreover the there is a very important point and that you must know here that the forbidden energy gap forbidden energy gap this forbidden energy gap depends upon also depends upon the temperature the temperature of that substance yeah it is simply that can be affected by temperature bus this is just one of the beautiful sentence i can write that it can be what affected can be affected directly directly by temperature by temperature right so that is the known as the energy gap here you see in case of the insulator the energy gap is very large and this is one of the reason that the electrons even when you supply the external electric field electrons cannot be supplied to the conduction band where it be, would become the current carrier so this is why under the influence of external electric field insulator does not carry any uh, current similarly in the conduction band we have already available the free electron but the energy gap is also very small and the electron can also easily move from the valence band into the conduction band also now here uh, uh, sorry sorry uh, lock uh, I am very sorry for that reason. Uh, the conductors, the conductors. Here you see in the conductors, the uh, there is a negligibly small uh, forbidden energy gap, and that is so narrow. 
that the conduction band and the valence band are nearly overlapping, right? And this is why these are kind of substances are the best conductors of electricity, right? That electrons can even be easily supplied from or can jump from the valence band into the conduction band right so but in the case of the semiconductors which have resistivity in between conductors and insulator the band energy gap is very small the conduction band is completely empty while the valence band is filled but when you increase the temperature then what happens some of the electron from the valence band can cross the band energy gap and can easily move into the conduction band where it can become the source of current so this is uh, one of the most important energy band, uh, band theory. Uh, this is why the energy band theory is one of the most important theory that it can successfully explain the electrical nature of the semiconductors for which the free electron theory fails to explain. Now, on the basis of the uh, energy band theory, I would like to explain to you the differences between conductors, insulators, and semiconductors. Now, the properties, the electrical conductivity. So for the conductors, the electrical conductivity, it is uh, between, uh, the conductivity is uh, 10 to the power 2 to 10 to the power 8 Simmons, where for the insulator, it is very small and it is 10 to the power what? It is 10 to the power minus 8. Therefore, insulator are bad conductor of electricity. This is the unit of conductivity, moh per meter, right? And for the semiconductor, it lies between the conductor and the insulator, as you see. Look, so uh, that, that is the ele electrical conductivity. Similarly, if you see the resistivity, so here the conductor have very small value of resistivity, as you see here look the resistivity lies between 10 to the, power, the order of 10 to the power minus 2 to 10 to the power minus 8 ohm meter while for the insulator this value is very high and for the semiconductor it is intermediate in between the conductors and insulators the band structure or the valence uh, that is the forbidden energy gap. So here uh, an interesting thing you see that the conduction band and the valence bands are overlapping. So what does this mean that the energy gap here is nearly uh, zero. The width of the energy gap is almost zero. Here for the conduction band and the valence band, for the case of the insulator, the energy band gap, yeah, the energy gap, simple, the energy gap, you see here, this gap is very, very large of the order of uh, uh, six electron volt here. You see here for the semiconductor, the energy gap compared to that on the insulator is relatively small and it is uh, depends on the nature of the substance for example for the germanium it is 0 0.7 electron volt and for silicon it is 1.1 uh, electron volt and these are other substances uh, uh, right the kinds of compounds so for them it is this one here, as I told, the energy gap is nearly zero or very, very small, the current carrier. So you see in the conductor, as I told, that uh, these are the free electrons in the uh, conduction band, which are the source of electric current. So here, the free electrons are the current carrier. For the insulators, no free electrons are uh, available, and the electrons the electrons tend to stay tends to stay within with its within its own orbit within its own orbit they do not move with an atom to atom here the electron 
since they are free so they can move with an atom to atom and can be the source of the current here the current carriers are both the free electrons right which have negative charge on them right and the holes holes are the vacant site and i will explain this to you inshallah in the next chapter right when i'll be explaining to you the current through semiconductors then i will explain to you that what are holes so hole acts like a positive charge though there are no positive charge on the hole but acts like right gives us the sort of or the kind of feelings that they, they have a kind of positive charge why because in the holes there are some missing electrons missing electrons when you increase the temperature of such kind of substances the conduction are uh, the valence band and the conduction at the ordinary temperature the valence band and the conduction bands are completely filled or uh, the conduction band is somewhat empty right in the conductors right somewhat empty means partially filled partially partially filled right while in the insulators the valence band is completely filled while the conduction band is completely unfilled unfilled means empty right and here the valence band is somewhat filled somewhat here means partially and the conduction band is also partially filled the temperature coefficient of resistance for all the matter the temperature coefficient of resistance is positive right and this is what uh, i explained to you in the unit number two unit second okay this is already explained to you for the insulator the temperature coefficient of resistance is zero alpha is zero here and it has positive value and for these kind of substances for semiconductor substances we have this negative so what does this positive mean so when it is positive so increase in temperature will increase the resistivity and the negative means that increase in the temperature of the substance increase in temperature decreases resistance decrease resistivity decrease resistivity and similarly the effect of temperature at conductivity no effect decreases increases as i told the effect of temperature and resistance this is already explained to you examples so these are the examples of uh, the conductors here the insulators and here the uh, semiconductor substances and this is the electron density it is 10 to the power 29 per meter cube and here no electron density and here you have this one now uh, remember i would like to tell you that diamond is bad conductor of electricity but it is good conductor of what the good conductor of heat you must remember this about the diamond so inshallah in the next lecture i will tell you about the magnetic substances right so uh, this is uh, uh, enough for today so inshallah see you in the next